Okay, today we got five TIG welding tips we're gonna show you as soon as I can find... Get out of the bus, man! All right, today is going to be all about welding. And if you're into welding, fabrication, and Volkswagens in particular, uh, subscribe below. Hit that bell. That way you're notified of when our next video comes up and uh, you'll be in the loop. So, first thing we're going to talk about today, we're going to start with the basics with TIG welding. And the first thing you're going to do is open up the bottle of gas, which is, the ours is right here. Now, a lot of people just crack the bottle open. That's okay, but if your lines are leaking, um, in between welds, you're gonna be wasting gas, which is wasting money. Take that valve, open it up all the way till you feel it. It's like you're closing it, but you're opening it. You feel, you'll feel it at the end. And that's gonna open it up and it's gonna basically seal off everything in between the welds. Yeah, keep so. it from leaking out the valve. That's right. Okay, next thing you wanna do is set the flow. I usually set mine right around 18-ish, you know, because I pay for the gas. If you're not paying for the <laughs> gas, like. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> you can crank it up. If you're outside in the wind or, or you know, you, you got a fan on, you got to turn that off. You know, don't, don't just struggle with that. You're going to be messing with that. But if you're outside, you don't have a choice. Sometimes you get a piece of cardboard and you actually shield yourself. But it's very important that the gas covers your weld. It, it's critical, actually. Without that, you're not welding very good yeah, at all. I was, I was welding on a big uh, excavator the other day and I had to, this big giant piece of cardboard, but I had to do it. It's so windy out. Yeah, weld in a box if you have to. <laughs> yeah, done it. Made, made my little box to weld in. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that's what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. So. You keep it. Keep you can keep it around 18. It'll just save you some money, and that'll be plenty flow for inside. Or 25. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Yeah. All right. Let's go uh, set up the welder. All right. Let's do it. All right. Next, we're gonna set up our machine. This is a. Uh, Really old Miller, 330 ABP, built in like the 70s, and it, they just don't stop. So you keep your eye on Craigslist and stuff like that for these things. You can find these free. I've gotten three of them for free, and they're great welders, but take a lot of power to run. You, you get so many free tools. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> a free, this one I've owned over 20 years, no problem. Torches free, and stuff. But free is for me. <laughs> absolutely. So set up. We're gonna put this on since we're welding steel, we're gonna put it on DC and use straight polarity for, for welding what we're gonna weld today. You want the high frequency on start, which means the high frequency is what makes the arc jump from the tungsten to the metal. So put it on steel, you only need it on start. If you were doing aluminum, that would be on continuous and AC for aluminum too. So put that back on steel. This is in the middle range for what we're gonna do. Almost everything I weld, I just leave this in the middle range. We're using the foot pedal, so this style here sets our amperage between this range, what this one is. So I'll leave it on full, but if you're welding something smaller, some thinner stuff, we can set this down here and you know turn it down. That'll make the range of the pedal more. Yep, get a little bit more. This, yeah, this being an older welder, it's a little bit different. Some of the newer ones just have some knobs on them, which is probably what you'll see. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I typically set mine to just above where it's too much power. You know, I'll do a test run yeah. and uh, then I'll just back, you know, then I can back it off with the pedal exactly. to where it needs to be. Yeah, that way you'll have the power there if you need it. You get right. to a corner or something, it takes more heat. And right. You get in there when it's you first start, it's colder. Yeah, more heat in it. So. Yep. There's so many things we can talk about with this. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot with setup. So, yeah. just we're just gonna start with the basic stuff and get you rolling, and then uh, we'll keep we'll keep showing you some more stuff down the road. Okay, what you want to use for welding wire is 035 TIG wire. This is 70S2, the regular steel wire, but it's really thin. A lot of people try to use like 1 16th wire. Or some people use 3 32nd wire. For welding anything on a Volkswagen, you're never going to need that. So just stick with the thin stuff like that and, and it's much better. Yep. And when you get started, um, when you're practicing, here's a little trick is use some stainless steel filler. Yeah. It will make, it's forgiving. So it's, it makes it a lot easier and you won't get frustrated when you're trying to lay these, your first beads. It's, very clean. Yeah. Use the stainless. If you got some stainless, you can practice welding on. Obviously, new stainless is not something that's been underwater for 
decades behind. Yep, same thing, 035 and that. Yeah. It's a little more expensive, but the time you, you, you'll you save from not throwing your welder against the wall. Exactly. <laughs> it welds, it's just as strong. You can weld your panels on your car with stainless sure. fire. I, I use it all the time. If yeah. it's not something like a roll cage or something. Exactly. Even, even Molly roll cages you can weld with stainless. Yeah, it's exactly. Good use, so. so for the the tungsten here, we use 332nd tungsten and we say in a nice sharp point, like a needle point on the end. And that is, will work for everything. Even if you're welding aluminum, that's the way I sand it. And uh, there's not much more than that. You're, you're, people talk about all different kinds of ways to sand your tungsten and they talk about making the flow go this way. All that does for me, takes more time. It's, it's kind of unnecessary. For the cup, we use a 5 16 cup. The reason there is so you can see around it. If you have a bigger cup, it obviously gives you more shielding gas, but you don't need it when, you have, when you're welding small stuff like this, unless you're welding some thicker aluminum, then I'll put a bigger cup on, but that's a 5 16 and I mean, you can go smaller, but this, to me, that works the best. For yeah, the sure have, let's see. Let's see if, uh, they come in different colors, which is different grades of tungsten. I use the purple all the time. It's, most, it's pretty universal. I think that's yeah, it. Probably the same. This is two percent tungsten. It's the red one that yep. that is here. But uh, yeah, that's, that's that should be that. And I, I it's uh, it's universal, so you can use it on just about everything. Yeah, you won't need it for anything else. Once you get that, you're done. No, I never buy anything else. Nope. <laughs> done. All right, today seemed like a lot of talky talky, no worky worky, but we just wanted to do the basics of TIG. Uh, that way you can kind of see a little bit what is going on and if you go out and get yourself a TIG. Um, it, it's not that bad, it's really, it's, it's just, just, just practice. It's just practice, literally you learn, you learn how to weld in 15 minutes and it took me literally a year to get good at it and I did it daily at a job. I was lucky to get, get a job where I got to learn how to weld, but I did it daily and it took me a year to get good at it. He says good at it. I mean, he took a year to get really good at it. <laughs> just practice, practice, practice. <laughs> practice all it practice. is. You, in a couple of weeks, you could be uh, sufficient enough to, to fix Absolutely. body panels or whatever you need to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, it's just practice. So. Yeah. With TIG welding, you have much less grinding to do. Even if you're welding sheet metal panels, it's just so much less work afterwards. And You'll love the TIG when you get to do it. You'll, you'll never so want better. a MIG weld again. <laughs> I know. We never grab a MIG welder. No. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today we've got five TIG welding techniques. Start over. <laughs> okay, today we got five TIG welding tips we're going to show you. All right, today, five TIG welding tips. Okay, today we got five TIG welding tips. TIG welding tips is kind of hard to say. <laughs> today we got five TIG welding tech. <laughs> you know, it's like something you make out of, not a. Not Did a you just say make? <laughs> 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 <laughs>